absolutely amazing. Yeah, Welcome, man. everyone, to uh, Drumeo. We have Larna Lewis with us today. Yeah. Hello. Thanks so much for coming oh, out. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, dude. Seriously. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Yeah. Anytime, man. We are welcome to present Larna Lewis, guys. This guy is an extreme drummer. Extreme, oh, uh, you, you teach out of... Uh, in Toronto, I yeah, Humber College. Um, he's doing clinics around uh, around Canada mm -hmm. right now, but uh, he's here today to talk to us about swing and funk feel, um, applying and thinking about the rudiments in a different way. I guess you can say. Yeah, totally. Um, there's definitely. Uh, I feel that a lot of people just need to add imagination to sometimes just a little bit they have, yeah. and they can make it. As big I as think they that's want a really good point. I was listening to you and Dave talking earlier, and I, I love that word. And that's almost, I wish we would have called this lesson imagination yeah. because mm -hmm. I feel that, that you have done a lot of things that I would have never thought to do. And it just show, goes to show that how different your imagination is and how yeah. much I'd prefer to have yours oh. over mine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so before, yeah. before we get started, Larnell, I think it'd be good just to tell people, because I know the biggest question that's going to come up is, Everything you're playing, and, and as far as gear-wise, we can get to the playing stuff later in the mm -hmm. lesson right away, but do you mind just like giving a quick introduction to the drums and the cymbals? Yeah, so as you guys are probably familiar with, these are the uh, DTX 950. Um, I love this kit, I have a set at home. And uh, the cymbals I'm using actually are the Gen 16 cymbals, uh, acoustic electric from Zildjian. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, there are a bunch of holes in these. Yeah. And uh, you're probably noticing this uh, very cool blue alien light, if you want. Um, this is the microphone that's actually underneath each symbol, which allows, uh, allows me to put it through a processor I have down here. And I can manipulate either the frequencies or the individual volumes or even the pan to give a different perspective. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And over here, awesome. my favorite, this is the DTX Multi-12. So I'll get into this one a little bit later. Yeah, some pretty cool sounds coming from that. Yeah. yeah. So if you guys want to check out more of uh, Larnell's playing, because, I mean, he's absolutely incredible, you can right. check out his website, larnellewismusic.com, mm -hmm. I believe, and he's got some YouTube links of his playing in there as well. Yeah. But, Larnell uh, with two L's. Yes. Mm -hmm. guys, and then one. Lewis. So there's three L's in the middle. All right. <laughs> That's right, three L's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, music.com. Yes. Cool. There's no sheet music or anything about this. This is all about feel and, mm -hmm. like you said, imagination. So I'm really excited to hear what you yeah. have to, uh, to, to bring to, to us here at Drumio. Also, he's got two other songs that I'm going to get you to play sometime throughout. Cool. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So. Nice. Cool. So first off, explain like you, 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 what you were playing kind of there. You were playing almost like a, it was more like a funk, yeah. kind of a soul type of thing. Yeah, a bit of a funk, you know, 16th note swing uh, shuffle, mm -hmm. funk shuffle um, throughout the piece. I was uh, definitely keeping two and four on the snare. And uh, a lot of the swing feel came from, well, mainly from what I was doing in the hi-hat and including the bass drum. Uh, I guess I'll give a sure, couple yeah. of examples. Yeah. OK, so, so this one, um, and you might notice that I'm not pulling my hand out from underneath to play the hi-hat as well. I'm kind of keeping it locked on the side, something that a group of friends and I just kind of just That's big in the from, gospel me. scene. I, yeah, I know guys, you know? when they, they'll hit it. Yeah, yeah. to kind of stay stay yeah. in that zone. It, it, yeah. it allows for some really cool cool textures, you know, when you're, cool. you're playing the edge of the hi-hat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As opposed to the tip and the edge and whatnot. But um, I'll play this main groove. We'll call it Groove A, or uh, Pattern A. And uh, I was doing something with a clap, but I'll do it without the clap. Ready? Yeah, okay. let's do it. There you go. Very cool. And do you mind, before we, we go further, do you mind just playing that really slow? Because I really want people to see exactly what's going on with the sure. hand pattern there, especially with mm -hmm. the top. <laughs> the left hand happening, yeah. sure. Here we go. Cool. Very cool. 
Very and now cool. you went to uh, when you went to the ride too for uh, uh, for a majority of the part of the song. Was it the same kind of groove? Same yeah. kind of concept? Definitely same kind of concept. Um, whatever I'm doing with my right hand, I pull it to the ride cymbal. And again, playing that left hand um, against the edge of the hi hat, same kind of texture, same kind of deal, but it also opens you up to allow you to do, you know, double strokes or paradiddles or anything that you want really in between your limbs. Cool. Yeah. Show us an example. Of course. Here we go. <laughs> I'll speed it up. So when you're when you're coming up with a, a swing funk kind of groove, what's the most important thing that you would say to 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 tell these drummers or to tell somebody who's trying to get into that? What do you think is the most important part uh, when you're approaching a funk swing kind of feel? First thing um, is to even within your fills, do not compromise two and four on the snare. Hmm. To start, mm -hmm. don't compromise it. Um, it needs to be there. It helps the move it, music to move forward. Um, and then there's the other thing, which is outside of whatever bass drum pattern you're playing, um, to indicate that it's swing. Because I can still play two and four on the snare, one and three on the kick, but I could completely change the feel with whatever's happening on the hi hat. So the main thing is to keep, which what I'm doing is a 16th note swing feel. Um, one E N, the two E N, the three E N, the mm -hmm. four E N. Da, 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 right. Mm -hmm. So I'm choosing that grid, and I'm playing things within that grid, also leaning towards 16th note uh, triplets as well. Cool. Yeah. So do you want to just, uh, in saying what you're, we were just talking about there, do you want to just maybe play some basic, basic, basic groove and then build it from there, kind of what you're talking about, just adding more stuff over top of the two and four and everything? Sure. That'd be great. Here we go. I could just listen to you groove like that all the Can we just do that instead? Oh, man. <laughs> cool. And, uh, and so I, sorry, I don't want to interrupt. No, go ahead. Going from. I, and I was just, this is coming from listening to you guys talk right there. I don't know if we're just going off what you had planned or anything like that. Oh, I'm, no, go ahead. That's all right. I loved how you were talking um, about imagination, taking something simple like the single paradiddle mm -hmm. and then just starting to twist a bit. Do you mind kind of going through that whole process just sure. kind of like a, just kind of like the way you went through it back when you were chatting yeah yeah so um working with what you got and being really imaginative and stretching it to whatever the situation is to the ends of whatever the situation is um i decided to work with the paradiddle so placing it on the drums you know you might hear usually hi-hat um you know right hand sticking left hand sticking snare quarter notes on the bass drum or whole, half notes on the bass drum, for example. Okay, so that's probably something you're familiar with. Um, I decided that I was gonna take that and uh, still use the same sticking, open it up to the ride cymbal, and swing it. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, let's yeah, see. Let's, let's go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Now you're talking about when we were chatting as well as about displacing that, starting the the paradiddle, the 60 note earlier or something like that to kind of completely change the feel up. Do you want to elaborate on that too? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in that feel, um, so this being your chord note, and I guess going to 30 second notes. Okay. Why not, right? <laughs> So 30 second notes, um, doing a paradiddle, I guess I'll slow down a little bit so you guys can see. I'll place it on the beat uh, and I'll play the paradiddle straight which actually will give a really cool feel um, and a, I guess I call them colors, um, but a nice color to whatever's happening within this uh, swung context. There you go. Cool. So. I'm going to put it on the, I guess it would be the last 30 seconds before the downbeat yeah. of the bar. Oh, okay. All right? <laughs> Here we go. You gotta show that concept again, but show it. Can you do it in maybe 16th notes or something a little sure. bit cool? Sure. But uh, so. As it switches the hand, you actually end up crashing. Exactly. So I got to open up and actually hit with the left hand, which is a good thing to work on. Yeah. Open up those hands. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> of course. Now, you do this with other rudiments as well, obviously, uh, not just paired at all, but uh, you, you're, you're talking about just having more imagination, more creativity with your rudiments. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, there are things like, you know, the six-stroke roll, mm -hmm. um, grouping maybe just triplets together, mm -hmm. you know, for an interesting combination for the six-stroke. For, so, for example, um, if you went right, left, left, right, right, left. Right, right, left, yeah. left, right, right, left. Yeah. Right, left, left, right, 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 right. Yeah. So what that does is it actually um, putting those two single strokes on the outside. Yeah. Putting the doubles, double strokes on the inside, it allows you to be really creative because if if you actually think about it and break it in half, so right, left, left, and I could sit around the kid and just do that. Yeah. And then change directions by starting right, right, left. So I'll do a quick example. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So. So show that's in an, uh, that in an application in like a fill setting or something like that. Sure. So I I know we're getting we're starting to chop out we're getting into chops. Today. I know I know it's I knew it was gonna come to this. And that's what I really wanted to go more into if it's alright to you. I don't want to like completely go off of if you had something. No, go ahead, okay. ask man, go go. Okay. <laughs> What's up? Um, when, when the, the lesson is called uh, feel has feel at the end, mm -hmm, and I really mm -hmm. want to talk about or a little bit of, at least about you know what are you thinking about or how do you get or develop a better swing or funk 
feel. Ah. Because I don't, when I play that exact same groove, it doesn't sound like that. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, and, and I know this is like a common thing. I, one of my favorite drummers is Steve Jordan. Oh my goodness, and it's yeah. just like, it's feel. It's, mm. I, can listen to, I can just listen to him play on its own, on his own forever. Mm -hmm. And I just love that. And so what, what is it about the way you're playing that is different than the way I play? <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us, we'd all love to know. <laughs> Um, well, I'll start with what I'm, I'm thinking about. And yeah. what I'm thinking about actually comes from the music that I've listened to. So I know for me, um, and also, you know, I started really young. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to lift a lot of stuff when I was a little bit. I started playing drums at two years old. Really? Wow. Yeah. My son's turning two in January. Oh, really? <laughs> and, yeah, he, he sits behind the kitten. He's like, that's a, <laughs> it's a start. <laughs> yeah, I, I started really young and... Um, I guess for me, like it just it started with listening. So, um, you know, I was listening to James Brown at one point. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, some of the gospel music, quite a bit of it has that particular type of feel in it. Yeah. Um, you know, listening to some jazz, listening to a lot of that stuff, and imitating it, and and really getting inside of of how that triplet should feel. Right. Is what is what I I spent like, a good amount of my time doing. So just listening, listening. Yeah, because you yeah. you want to take that kind of stuff in. You want to listen to it, and and and. Um, you want to breathe that music. Yeah. The more you listen to it, is the more that you'll you'll find little uh, interesting characteristics about it. Whether it's you know Latin music, reggae music, yeah. you know um, drum and bass, whatever it is, you'll find those nuances, you know, and you'll be able to apply them because you can kind of jump into that file and flip back and right. pull it out and call or at will. Yeah, because I think subconsciously, just listening to things naturally, that's I. I in some ways, I could, you could consider that practice because mm -hmm. even though you're not necessarily doing something mechanical or technical, mm -hmm. something is still happening. And a big portion of playing the drum set is brains. It's yeah. not all muscles. It's not all technique and stuff like that. Big, I think a big part starts up there and obviously in your heart as well. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's really, really important. Can you uh, give us some examples of like some of the music that you listen to or some of the stuff that you listen to, maybe some inspirational drummers that you uh, follow along so people can maybe check them out? Yeah, um, definitely. If you want to listen to some shuffle stuff, like uh, more like backbeat oriented, uh, guys like Jeff Beccaro, yeah. you know, um, Steve Gadd, yeah, you know what I mean. Like just kind of taking it back there. Like, cool. Those are a couple of names. Um, newer school, I guess you could say, in the the R and B gospel yeah. realm. You know, like guys like Teddy Campbell, right. um, Calvin Rogers is another. Great drummer, yeah. yeah. You know, um, what about album? Like, if you were to say, hey, go check out this album, it's got great, mm. great chops, a great groove, great feel. Oh, my goodness, I've just listened to so many different things. Um, one I can say, uh, one album that that kind of encompasses what I am drawing from an artist named Kim Burrell, okay. And then the album is called Everlasting Life, Kim Burrell, yeah, Everlasting, Everlasting Life. Life. She's a gospel artist. Yeah. And um, I believe Nat Townsley is one of the drummers and also Doobie Powell. Cool. Okay. As well. Yeah. So those guys. Cool. I'll have to check those out. Yeah. Well, maybe um, we should play a song. I was song. just going to say, yeah, let's well, get Just let me do it. This is my job, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. What would you like to do next, Jay? <laughs> do you mind playing a song for you? Sure. Okay. Um, this is another song off of uh, the same album, the first track I played is a song called He That Is In Me, and the second track I'm gonna play is called We Gotta Praise. So this is a, an artist named Dominique. Um, it's from a project called The Glory Town Project. You guys can check that out. I'm playing on it, as well as my good friend, Adrian Bent. Shout out. Nice. Um, yeah, let's get into it.
Oh my goodness, where do we even begin? Yeah, where do we begin? I want you to dissect that whole song for us as well. Oh man, okay. <laughs> that was insane. No, we don't have time for that. I know I'll have to do a clinic later. Can we just keep him here for another minute? <laughs> I could do the clinic from here. No. Um, <laughs> Why not? Exactly. Cool. Um, there's a couple more things I want to talk about. Cool. <laughs> sure. Uh, one is, and because I, I, I mentioned to you I watched a lot of your videos before you came here. And I also read that you started playing drums at a young age in church, mm -hmm. correct? And uh, and one, so one thing I noticed when listening to your playing is you and someone even I think it was Fred mentioned this in the chat. You have such a light and soft touch, and even though you are playing lightly or, or softly, there still seems to be lots of intensity behind what you're drum, what, how, what you're playing. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you have any tips on how to develop that, or is there anything special you're doing? Is it just experience? Is, like as far as developing a light touch. Yeah, um, as far as developing a light touch, definitely comes from experience. Yeah. Um, getting a lot of bad looks from musical directors <laughs> when you're playing too loud. Um, you know, bad looks from vocalists when you're playing too loud. Bad looks from audience members when you're playing too loud. Yeah. So you learn to uh, keep the energy up and the intensity. Um, in those situations, at least that's how I learned. I learned from, you know, trial and error, because uh, you can play soft, but the intensity could be lost in translation. Like it right. can be lost in you trying to keep the volume down. So um, I know there are a couple of things that I would do to help uh, keep the intensity but keep the volume down. Right. So one, for example, is choosing to play a rim shot, which a rim shot, if you don't know already, as opposed to a cross stick, a rim shot. A rim shot is when you are playing the snare and the rim at the same time. So I'll give two examples here. This is roughly snare center sound. Okay? Rim shot. So the rim shot sounds a lot more aggressive. Right. Now, um, easier to perform on an on um, acoustic kit playing rim shots where you are, it, no matter how light you play the rim shot on a, an actual snare drum, that intense sound is still there. Mm. So you can maintain that intense sound, but still keep it to a low volume. Cool. So that's something for the snare. Um, when it comes to light touch and um, intensity, it's about understanding how everything is relative. So. For example, if you want to be, we're going to talk in dynamic terms, um, if you have a really high range for your double forte, mm -hmm. let's say most people would consider your double forte is triple forte, but we'll call it double forte, um, and you're playing in a particular room where it cannot handle that type of volume past the, the sound system that you're using, mm -hmm. you want to create a new max. So in your dynamic range where you would consider a double forte, maybe carry it down to a single forte or even a mezzo forte, MF. Mm -hmm. And once you reduce your top end, giving the image of a dynamic range only topping out at a mezzo forte mm -hmm. would help to create that range of intensity as well. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, another thing that I do is um, you can be more intense without getting louder by being more... Um, I guess your, your playing could be even denser. Like you can do more things yeah. within your playing. Uh, you know, if it's jazz, for example, um, maybe filling it up a little more on the snare drum, a little more action between the snare and ride, um, a little more stuff happening between the tom, just a little more mm -hmm. so that it's a little busier. Do you, do you mind demonstrating that a little, a little bit? Sure. I'm about to so, say, especially in the, in the jazz yeah. setting. Yeah, okay. Um, Go to a jazz setting because we can do that here. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Yamaha DTX 950K. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'll just play a straight up swing groove. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, just like cool. that. Just like that. Just, just like, like that. that. No. <laughs> okay, one one final thing. I'm gonna, okay. I'll move. We'll try and move out relatively quickly because I know there's probably like a billion questions. Oh yeah. man. Um, and the lessons flying past. Yeah, I know. It's I'm looking at the timer. <laughs> and I haven't even got all my questions. <laughs> I know. I still got tons of questions. <laughs> I'm not letting Dave talk. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jared. Uh, foot technique. This is you wanted to ask. Oh this yeah, too. I did want to ask this too. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. You, I think it was before you were jamming, and you started doing some stuff with your foot that, and Dave's like, oh, we took the, the double pedal off. <laughs> and we do a lot of foot techniques, like a, a lot. Like, we really try and, and study that, and especially Dave. and, mm -hmm. and uh, But, so we just like to kind of take a look at the foot cam mm -hmm. when you're playing, even if it's just jamming, and then maybe after that, we can just talk a little bit about what exactly you're doing okay. and try and slow it down. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. So just play a bit? Yeah, with like some foot technique. Some stuff. Yeah, yeah. Some, cool. yeah. some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Let's talk because your heart, your your ankle. I see your ankle is hardly coming up, mm -hmm. and it seems like like when I watch you play, your your motion that you're that you're using are a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. and so like you have big feet too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 13, 14, 14 feet. Okay. Yeah. So what, can you just do you mind just kind of showing us what you're doing? Okay. So um, it's a uh, for me um I know this technique to be heel up. Yeah. Um, but it's actually something that came out of tapping on the ground with my foot mm -hmm. a lot. So I might try that on the uh, yeah. foot can here. So. so I'm actually tapping yeah. the pedal. Gotcha. Kind of like a basketball, like working with the rebound. Yeah. It's kind of pushing the pedal. But um, same as um, wrist motion, you know, with the hand. So applying some of those same techniques to the, right, to the foot. to the foot. Ah, cool. You did, uh, uh, when you were jamming before the lesson, you did like a, a group of four or six or whatever it was. It was almost like a, a single stroke roll on the bass drum. That's when I turned to Jared. I'm like, I could have sworn we took the double pedal off. <laughs> Do I, can, you demo, can you just demo that? Uh, almost like a consistent roll that you had going on there. Okay. <laughs> That's one foot. That's one pedal. Yeah, That's awesome. So what I'm seeing is a uh, a lot, of, a little bit of swivel. A little it's bit of swivel. Yeah, bit, it's it's uh it's easy for me to in the middle of it um, get my foot back in position to continue to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just something that kind of just happened. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, based on the um, you know, again, again, the heel up. If I find myself, it's almost like if you if you're playing and you find yourself. Your, your stick just starts to kind of get away from you. Might yeah. do whatever you need to do to pull it in while you're playing. Right. So for me, the swiveling is what helps me yeah. get back to swivel. Back to I, I think that's a really good point too, and yeah. I call that adapt and survive, and that's d based on your experience because uh, I think you, you would get into a playing situation. You're like, wow, it would work best if there was four notes in a row there. So you just do it. Mm -hmm. You just find a way to do it, right? Yeah. And, and then you adapt and survive, and then you, the more you do it, the better you become at it. Yeah. So I think that's very very true. Mm -hmm. But with that said, we should. Yeah. You have a question. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start. Tons sorry. of questions that I want to ask him, but we got to get to member questions. First. Yeah, and that. Well, you can talk one second. <laughs> Just yeah. Maybe I'll get a word in a, a word in or two here. You go ahead, Jerry. Okay. So, if you guys watching live below the video, you'll see submit a question. If you want to ask a question. Um, just go ahead and submit it there. Dave, you can go ahead and say I don't, it. I don't have any questions. Let's just get to the because we're going to have tons of them. What time is it now? we got maybe like 15 minutes left. You can say left. your word quota now, Dave. My Sorry, my what? You can, your word quota. My word quota. I got like <laughs> what, 150 words I have to say in every lesson. Oh, yeah? If I don't, if I don't, if I don't get it in, the members get mad. <laughs> um, okay, first one's from Alan, and he's asking about 
are these electric symbols? And we kind of chatted about that beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I can just quickly yeah. say something about yeah, that. Yeah, sure. So I will take one off the stand. Sure. Okay, this is a 12 inch splash symbol. Now, I'm gonna see that. Ooh. Okay. It's an actual symbol. Maybe we can hold that right up to there. You have like right up to the, uh, the high cam and they can get a close up. Of it. Oh, it's no light up there. But yeah, yeah, you, can, you yeah, guys can see it. it. You yeah. can see you it. You see me? Hi, <laughs> mom. Hi, mom. Yeah, so um, there's tons of holes in it. You can still see my kit the closer yeah. I get. <laughs> and. Um, if you guys can kind of focus back here, maybe even from that angle, this blue thing that I have happened in here, mm -hmm. is a um, cable, and there are two microphones. Those capture the sound. Yeah. Exactly. Because the symbols obviously aren't acoustic necessarily, so they're very quiet. Yeah, so I'll just tap it. Yeah. I don't know if it'll... No, you're fine. Yeah. Right? So... So it's an acoustic symbol. Um, and that's the A, and the E is electric, so. Um, and I would not suggest putting regular symbols on top of these. Right. Because you will blow out your speakers in your ears. <laughs> Good call. Yeah. That's, that's probably that. true, yeah. I never even thought about that. Mm -hmm. You could use that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, um, moving on. Daniel L. is asking about the, the music you were playing to. Did we mention the, the first song? Did yes. you mention the name of that? He that, is, um, he that Is In Me. Okay, cool. And is that artist? Dominique as well? Dominique okay. as Dominique. well. Okay. And that's so, Dominique with just a Q at the end. At the end, yeah. okay. correct. You guys can go ahead and check that out. Um, JDudes116 <laughs> says, um, what type of sticks are you using? Oh, um, these are Vader Sugar Maple 7A. Oh. Cool. All right. Yeah. And you're a Vader artist, correct? Yes. Um, Alan is also asking, what are you using for your left foot? What technique? Oh, um, that's a good question. Uh, if I'm playing time, I, it was something that was shown. Yeah. Just kind of bouncing, mm -hmm. you know, kind of subdividing a bit. Yeah. yeah. Some people would call it counting. With the back of your with Yeah, your with heel. the back of your heel. Yeah. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. The rest... Um, came from, again, using my imagination yeah. and, I guess, treating it as even a percussion instrument, for yeah. example. So um, playing it against anything that I'm doing in a groove. So it's not... Sometimes, you know, at least for these last two songs, I've been playing it constantly, eighth notes or yeah. quarters. Um, I can give a quick example, yeah. just yeah. like how I would use it in another Anytime context. you can give us an example, please do. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Here we go. All right, <laughs> we won't get into that one. That'll take a few years. Um, Daniel J. Jones says, "Great lesson, Larnell. Hope to see more from you." Very reminiscent of a Jerry lesson, which is another drummer we have here at Drumio, and he says, "Which, by the way, is about the biggest compliment I can give." So oh man! Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, Jav, oh, another one about the symbols. Uh, we just talked about that. What do you think of uh, these Gen 16s? Oh my goodness. Something like this being released is amazing. Um, if you guys, I'm not sure if you realize what's happening. Um, again, these are, you know, metal. It's metal symbols. Mm -hmm. And they have a microphone pickup underneath. Uh, these symbols, which you saw with the splash, they have tons of holes, which brings down the volume. Mm -hmm. And um, they are being reamplified with this microphone into a little unit I have here, which is called a processor. And this processor has uh, two stereo outputs, or one stereo output, so two lines, left and right. And um, again, we talk about using your imagination. Mm -hmm. So some people, in this context, you know, you see me using them as my main symbols. I don't have any other pads, I have no other symbols. Um, but for me, in my mind, what I'm working towards is including these symbols in my acoustic setup to make a hybrid setup. Uh, yeah. So for example, coming out of this unit, going stereo into something like a delay pedal or a distortion pedal. You can go mono into a distortion pedal. 
and it could just be, you know, with the hi hat, or you could stack these symbols together, um, oh, or okay. uh, with, with the ride of the china, or you could just use the hi hats alone through whatever sound effect that it is you want, like a wah pedal, envelope filter, mm. and it could be that sound that you play on the side, um, but without leaving the acoustic symbol feel realm. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea. Yeah. Um, Tosku1989 says, and this, I love this question, what was the most difficult technique you've ever learned and how much time did you spend and nail it down? <laughs> Foot yeah? technique, yeah. Really? Um, I was, uh, I spent quite a bit of time working with the foot pedal um, and just kind of coming up with things over the last 14 years. So I'm wow. 28 now. And um, so I started when I was like 13, 14 with the foot pedal alone, just looking at it, staring at it, playing it, checking it out, trying things. And uh, I've been adding to the, to the technique ever since. So. Cool. Yeah. Um, Drum, Drumanak, D. Drumanak says, uh, this doesn't quite relate to the video, but he's having trouble developing tom speed. How okay. can he move around the toms faster without hitting the rims? Ah, good question. So, first thing you got to remember is uh, you're trying to solve the problem. The problem is hitting the rims speed. So, starting slowly with hitting the toms in a way where you're not hitting the rims, and once you can you know, you find that, that decent start point. I guess just work with a metronome and challenge yourself every day to get around the toms. Um, and as you speed it up, you'll find that you're more comfortable with aiming and hitting particular parts of the drums. I mean, even try working on just hitting the rims alone, you yeah. know, using your imagination. Hitting the rims alone, hitting the toms, and like purposely hitting the rims, or purposely hitting the toms and working on your accuracy. But uh, that would be my suggestion. Cool. Um, Iggy.siva says, what will be a good thing to practice if someone is new to the jazz style? Ah, mm -hmm. a good thing to practice is being very comfortable with still holding time, what's called holding time on your ride and your hi-hats, mainly two and four. And, um, well, for starters, you got to listen to the style. You got to listen to the music. Mm -hmm. If you don't listen to it, then you won't have anything to draw from. Um, but from listening to the music, really pick out what people are doing with their snare drum. Um, listen to how their snare drum is interacting with the music. Play along with that stuff. But I guess the main thing would be to, you know, understand what would be called snare chatter or talking with the snare drum. Mm. Sorry. Yeah. Cool. Um, I like this question. Do it again. It says, awesome lesson. Um, do you have any exercises or books to develop this kind of playing? So. Any like books that you used growing up? I used Syncopation, cool. actually. Um, that was the only book I had. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, what I did, again, here comes that word, imagination. I used my imagination, and uh, based on styles of music I was listening to, I would actually try to use the patterns from the beginning of the book um, before you get into the heavier Syncopation exercises. Try to use them musically up against the music and just feel my way through the pages, including those uh, short exercises. But it's uh, really just came down to developing my ear and using those patterns and just jumping off from there. Yeah. I got to ask you, how often did you practice when you were starting out? Like, an, um, do you have any idea, like hourly wise, back when you were really getting into it? Yeah, um, when I really got into it, I was doing about three hours a day. Okay. Um, that was for roughly about a seven month uh, period where I would come home from school mm -hmm. uh, at about three o'clock. I would practice from three to six, just in time to watch Bravo Jazz. <laughs> and, um, and then once that was done, an hour's worth, I would do my homework. So <laughs> it wasn't all drums all day. Nice. But I would love it to be. But. Yeah. Now it is, right? Though? Oh, man. <laughs> all day. All day. And dishes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one final question, and then we'll play a song, sure. and that'll be the end of the lesson. I know you, he's got to go to a clinic like, right after this, so right. you're putting it, you're putting on a clinic. At yes. Long uh, so it's Langley, awesome. Langley, BC. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Um, what is the difference between foot technique or any technique on the electric and acoustic set? I guess, and he's, I like that how he said, or any technique. Like, do you 
find it's a direct transfer, or do you find that certain things you have mm. to play differently here than an acoustic kit? Yeah, you know what? That's an awesome question. Um, I'll start by saying this is not an acoustic drum kit, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but you can use your imagination, and you can pretend it is. And, you know, shameless plug, the DTX 950 large size pads um, um, with this, you know, textured silicone. Like, it, 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 they were able to really nail the difference in um, tension with the snare pad versus all the tom pads. And so for me, when I'm practicing on these electronic kits, it's uh, a shorter distance to get from electric to acoustic. So okay. a lot of the things that I practice actually translate really well on the acoustic drum kit. Um, but you need to use your imagination when you're here mm -hmm. on the electric stuff because, uh, you know, you might have a rim sample, but it's not the exact same thing. It's not a piece of metal. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, let's play the song, and then yeah. we'll say goodbye right after that. All right. Let's uh, say goodbye so I can get out of the shot, because I'm realizing every time we go to that camp, I'm oh, really? right in the middle of the shot. Nice. So okay. I'm going to say goodbye. I'll, I'll say goodbye, too. Marnell, thank <laughs> hey, you so much, man. You guys, thank you for hey, having anytime, me Anytime, you are always welcome oh, at Romeo here. Yeah. Totally appreciate it. We'll leave you. We'll get out of the way, and then you can play this last two. Okay. Yes. We'll see you Sorry, later. I'll what? explain it while you guys make your exit. Sure. Um, this last song was written by a great friend of mine. His name is Samuel Williams, awesome producer. He's actually the one that produced the songs that you've heard today. Um, look out for more songs from him. This song is called Cab. <laughs> 